Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know. For more videos just like this one, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment your thoughts down below about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. The stock market has had mixed results recently, with both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ trending downwards. However, we do see Bitcoin being relatively stable, and companies such as General Motors increasing by around 7.8%. Currently, investors are in a holding pattern as they await a decision on interest rates from the Fed at the conclusion conclusion of their two-day meeting. I think these results from the Federal Reserve are going to be positive regarding how they plan to lower interest rates, so this is going to be great news for the general stock market. More good news is that we see General Motors, which is an automotive manufacturing company, surge in their share price by 8% after obliterating their quarterly revenue expectations by $4 billion, and we're going to talk more about this story a little later in the video. You should also be aware that both Microsoft and Google brought in very impressive earnings and revenue results. As an example, Microsoft posted revenues of approximately $62 billion in its fiscal quarter two ending December 31st, and that would represent a year-over-year -year increase of 17.6% ahead of analysts' expectations. And the main reason for these very phenomenal results would be because of their release of new artificial intelligence-enabled office products. Meanwhile, Google also reported very strong results, considering their ad revenue for YouTube skyrocketed up to $9.2 billion in quarter four of last year, and it's up from below $8 billion from the year prior. The CEO even said that YouTube is, quote, already benefiting from our AI investments and innovation. And that's why Alphabet, which is the parent company of both Google and YouTube, brought in total revenue, which was up 13% year over year, which came in at approximately $86 billion. But despite this, Microsoft and Google shares are trending lower, so I think investors should take advantage of this weakness on these phenomenal companies, which would include Microsoft and Google. Next up, we also have the United Parcel Service, which is UPS, which normally delivers your packages, if not Amazon or FedEx, and they recently slashed around 12,000 jobs. UPS is a shipping giant, and they are also cracking down on employees who are working from home because they demand their employees to return to work at least five days a week. They also forecasted a slowdown in demand, and that's why they are cutting jobs. You should also know that the IMF, which is the International Monetary Fund, which is the United Nations flagship financial agency, said that the global economy will grow by 3.1% this year. So for those investors who are saying that the economy is going to crash or we are going to see a giant pullback in the general stock market, I think they are completely mistaken because the data is just not there for that. Like we said earlier, General Motors, which is an automotive manufacturing company, has seen great demand for their hybrid vehicles and a slump in demand for their electric vehicles. Even though electric vehicle sales grew by 52% last quarter as compared to quarter four of 2022, it seems that automotive manufacturers are cutting the prices of their electric vehicles due to this decrease in demand. We have seen a pileup of electric vehicles regarding unsold cars, but meanwhile, we see hybrid vehicles have been selling like hotcakes. But even with that being said, General Motors is doing quite well, considering that their profit jumped by 12% in 2023, despite the auto workers' strike, which costed the company around $1 billion last fall. In previous videos, I've actually gone into detail regarding the benefits of hybrid vehicles over electric vehicles, because I think the future is actually hydrogen electric vehicles, and that would be a hybrid vehicle, and I think that is going to dominate the market. And even though Toyota is the forerunner in this regard, they have recently urged owners of around 50,000 older vehicles in the United States to get repairs over a potentially deadly airbag problem. Obviously, this is going to add some volatility for Toyota as a company, but in general, they are still one of the market leaders in their respected space. In other news, we have also seen a large slump in demand for alcoholic beverages, and this has negatively impacted companies such as AB InBev and Constellation Brands. The stocks of these companies are plummeting right now, as a recent poll found that 21% of drinking age U.S. adults said that they plan to cut back on drinking this January, up 6% year over year. This is another reason why U.S. beer shipments hit a 24-year low last year. Even when 18 to 26-year-olds were surveyed in the United States, they hadn't had a drink in the last six months. So this either indicates that the United States is trying to become more healthy overall, or that it seems that the younger generation who are growing up are just not as interested in alcoholic beverages, which 
lowers the share prices of these alcoholic companies. So I would love to hear your thoughts about that development down below. Speaking about drinks, let's talk about Starbucks, which is a huge coffee chain. Starbucks recently brought in a very impressive quarter regarding their quarterly revenue numbers, which beat expectations and set a new record. However, investors still seem disappointed as same store sales seemed to cool off in regards to their growth. I personally think Starbucks is a phenomenal company to hold in your portfolio, so always make sure to do your own research before you make an investment decision. Next up, we have Pfizer. This company is a biopharma company and they're most notably known for their COVID vaccines. They also posted a surprise quarterly profit even after their COVID products have seen a huge decrease in demand. You should know that their COVID business revenue is down by 78% and that's why I personally am staying away from companies like Moderna, Pfizer, or any other company that had major ties to COVID vaccines. The reason for this is because that was just not a sustainable business model. However, on the other hand, we also see Novavax cutting 12% of their global workforce. Novavax, ticker symbol NVAX, trades for $4.18, and I've warned people about this company multiple times. The company is currently trying to survive as the demand for their COVID-19 products continues to diminish. And again, that's why I am staying away from companies such as Novavax, Pfizer, and Moderna, because they just didn't have a sustainable revenue segment in regards to COVID-19 products. In other news, SoFi Technologies dipped in their share price after a Morgan Stanley analyst downgraded their rating for SoFi Technologies, which is a fintech company that essentially operates as a digital bank. SoFi Technologies is a phenomenal company, even though their stock price slid by 3.1% in pre-market trading after a Morgan Stanley analyst downgraded the fintech bank to an underweight rating from their original equal weight rating. SoFi Technologies recently released a very impressive earnings report where they achieved profitability and that caused their share price to spike, so naturally we could see this company cool off their share price over the next few weeks. The reason Morgan Stanley downgraded the stock in their overall rating is because they believe that SoFi will experience worsening top-line revenue growth throughout the year of 2024. However, this is not as bad as it seems because clearly, as this company continues to draw in more consumers, more customers, more members, this is going to generate them larger amounts of revenue, which would make it harder to beat quarter over quarter because of the law of large numbers. Basically, Morgan Stanley is just stating the obvious here, so naturally their growth is going to deteriorate over time as they bring in more and more revenues. But fundamentally, this company is still extremely solid, and that's why I am an investor in SoFi. Next up, we have Microsoft back in the news, and Microsoft is a technology giant, and it's one of my all-time favorite companies and stocks to invest into. Microsoft ticker symbol MSFT, and OpenAI, which is the creator of ChatGPT, are in talks to invest in Figure AI. And if you didn't know, Figure AI is a startup company that develops robots. Essentially, Microsoft wants to invest $95 million, while OpenAI plans to invest $5 million into Figure AI. The reason why they would want to make investments in this company is because Figure AI is reportedly working on an artificial intelligence-powered robot that acts like a human and can perform a human tasks, which are deemed dangerous or unsuitable for regular humans. This is going to allow Microsoft and OpenAI to compete directly with Tesla through Figure AI, because Tesla is also working on their own humanoid-like robot known as Optimus. Elon Musk, who is the CEO of Tesla, even said recently that Optimus could end up being their largest business over time. So clearly there is loads of money in regards to humanoid working robots. Speaking about Tesla, let's talk about this company. If you didn't know, Tesla is an electric vehicle manufacturer which also specializes in artificial intelligence and they also have a booming segment in regards to energy storage as well as energy generation. Tesla's share price has been falling very rapidly because of various negative news catalysts that have come out and that's why analysts are saying to sell the stock. However, I personally think that they are dead wrong. The news stories that have been released honestly did not impact Tesla's fundamentals at all. Literally, investor psychology is just getting out of hand and people are selling Tesla without really looking at the hard numbers and data. You have to remember as investors that Tesla's future is going to be way better than their past and they already have a very successful past, so just think about what this company could achieve in the future. That's why I think this analyst is completely wrong as he tries to get investors to sell this company so he could potentially buy this company cheaper, and honestly, I'm not falling for it, but what I am doing is I am accumulating more Tesla shares even as the share price continues to dip, because the rebound is going to be fantastic. 
Next up, we have Thermo Fisher Scientific, which forecasted annual profit and revenue, which was below Wall Street estimates, and that's why TMO stock is down by around 2.82% today. The reason for this is because they are experiencing a slump in demand for their services to make therapeutics and vaccines. Thermo Fisher forecasted annual revenue in the range of 42.1 billion to 43.3 billion, even though Wall Street analysts expect 42.93 billion as the midpoint. And honestly, that literally falls in the range that Thermo Fisher forecasted. However, this company is anticipated to miss on their earnings per share because they anticipate that they will bring in $20 to 95 cents and at $22 per share, while analysts expect them to bring in $22 and 4 cents per share. So clearly, they will most likely miss on their earnings per share. But we have to remember that Thermo Fisher's fourth quarter profit came in slightly ahead ahead of Wall Street estimates. And the reason behind this is because of their cost reduction measures, which I think will continue well into the future. So don't let this scare you. This company is still a very fundamentally solid company, and if you haven't looked into this company, I would encourage you to do so. Next up, we have Plug Power, which is a hydrogen company that is doing very well recently. Plug Power, ticker symbol PLUG, ticker name Plug, has jumped by 11.3% today. This is because Roth MKM upgraded the stock to a buy rating from their original neutral rating, and they increased their price target from $4.50 up to $9. This is causing Plug Power to jump in their overall share price to where the recent change was 17.96% because like we've said in previous videos, the future of this company looks pretty bright and if you could get in early, then the future of this company could be phenomenal for your portfolio. The analyst even said, and I quote, Our visit to the Georgia hydrogen plant gives us confidence the facility is ramping smoothly and all major technical issues are handled, addressing our prior concerns about backlog and margin visibility. The analyst goes on to say, Management deserves strong credit for building the largest electrolyzer in North America in half the time of legacy facilities. So this is great news for Plug Power, and I highly recommend you look into this company because I believe hydrogen is the future. More good news is that Novo Nordisk, ticker symbol NVO, has brought in phenomenal results for quarter four. Their total sales were up 36%, and the company's valuation surged above $500 billion. Novo Nordisk is a gigantic biopharma company, and they have a great therapeutics, which would include Ozempic for diabetes and Wagovi for obesity. According to the article, the company reported Wagovi sales of $4.5 billion and Ozempic sales of nearly $14 billion for the full year last year. That accounts for more than 54% of the nearly $34 billion in total sales for the year. Wagovi sales helped increase total sales in its obesity division by 154% year over year, largely driven by U.S. consumers. On top of that, the company is also able to increase their dividends by 52% for investors, and it now has about $90 billion of cash on hand, which is absolutely insane. So clearly, do more research into this company because they are a heavy hitter. The only real competition that this company experiences is from other companies like Eli Lilly, which again is a fantastic company to hold. I personally own both Eli Lilly and Novo Nordisk in my portfolio, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about these companies down below. You should also be aware that Paramount Global shares have skyrocketed recently by more than 10%, and this is because the media mogul Byron Allen made a $14.3 billion bid to buy all of Paramount's outstanding shares. According to the report, Allen offered $28.58 each for the company's voting shares and $21.53 for non voting shares. To put that into perspective, the company is only trading at around $14.75, so that marks a 50% premium compared to recent trading levels. However, it is unclear how this guy plans to finance this takeover. If you didn't know, this company is a media giant, and this is very good for investors, to where an analyst even chimed in from KeyBank to say this, and I quote, We think Para, which is Paramount Global, should immediately take this deal as it represents a little less than 50% premium to yesterday's close, which is likely an acceptable premium for the majority of Para's shareholders, end quote. And I honestly think that this is a great development. Lastly, we have Crocs, which is a shoemaker, ticker symbol C-R-O-X, doing extremely well as they grow grow their international expansion for their brand. Crocs demonstrates substantial pricing power and has a bright growth prospect in Asia. The company's financial performance has also been rock solid with very strong revenue growth and expanding operating margins. The company continues to expand internationally, which signals long-term success for this company. Currently, the author of this article believes that their shares are undervalued, coming in at 41% undervalued, so please check out this company if you want to see this company grow. With that being said, go ahead and announce like that like button right now. Subscribe if you're new. Comment your thoughts down below and I'll see you in the next YT video.